Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video I'll be going over how to plot a running fix. Welcome to episode 51, The Running Fix. For show notes and helpful checklists, please go to www.carpediumsailing.com slash show notes. I have included a link in the description below. And now, let's get started. I would recommend watching or reviewing these two videos to make sure that you understand the fundamentals. So we've just left Lund Harbor. I'm going to make the breakwater there, there's a red day beacon on the breakwater, and I'm just as I'm leaving the harbor, I used that as a visual fix at 11.58. I'm gonna plot that now. I've plotted a DR heading out this way um, for about a mile and a half. And then there's an island off to our right, major islet with a light on it, and I'm gonna use a running fix on that. So part one was all about basic plotting and uh, your DR, so that's what I'm doing now. And then we talked about a three LOP fix. Here we're talking about a running fix, which is a real uh, benefit if you can't see anything else. So if this was really socked in and all I could see was that light or at night, and that was the only navigational aid, um, it can be quite useful. So that's what we're gonna be covering today is the running fix. So what I've done is I've marked the time and then we're doing a speed of four knots on a compass course of 253. So remember a compass course is a course that has been corrected for variation as well as deviation. Um, I don't actually have a deviation table for this boat, but just out of habit, I've always been taught to go compass course. So technically we're on a magnetic course. I've, I've converted my magnetic variation. Uh, it's 17 degrees east, 017 east for for now, for our area here at this time, in, in this year, in 2022. So we're gonna go 22 minutes for a mile and a half at four knots, that's my DR. So 11.58 plus the 22 minutes at that point, I'm gonna shoot my first bearing uh, out to Major Islet. And then as I did in the basic plotting video, I'm going to do an animation as well. And then you're not gonna see me plotting on the paper here, but I will do one, um, like I did in the basic plotting with an overhead view when I get home. And then as we did then, we'll also compare the two uh, marks. So the GPS compared to the actual running fix. So it's now 12.20, which is the time of my first DR. I'm gonna shoot the bearing to Major Islet. And I get a magnetic bearing of 279, 279. So that gave me a bearing of, before I get into that, I just want to mention that this is sort of something I do. I don't typically like to have electronic devices out here in the cockpit. I'm old school, I've always been told to navigate down below. But when single handing especially, I like to keep a lookout. So I use this and I use my hatch here as sort of a chart table. I'm protected from the elements, but I can keep a lookout. So I'm using my autopilot to steer and I can see where I'm doing. So this is my nav station that I use up here. So now I'm gonna be plotting on paper and then I'm gonna get our GPS fix as well. Um, and um, so we had a 279 bearing, magnetic 279. We have 17 um, degrees of easterly variation. So compass to true or magnetic to true, we add east, so we correct it by adding east. So I'm adding 17 to 279, so I get a bearing of 296, which I'm now gonna plot as my first um, LOP. And then I'm gonna advance that LOP by one mile. I'm gonna do another LOP where the second LOP crosses the first LOP is my running fix. So we've gone one mile, seven and a half minutes. It's now 1227 or 1228. I'm gonna take my second bearing to the same spot and this time the bearing is 300 and 354. Three, 
I'm going to start by just reviewing the instruments that I'll be using today. So uh, I have the one-handed dividers. I have my 2B mechanical pencil and an eraser in case I make any mistakes. The protractor we already saw in my basic plotting uh, video. And uh, as I mentioned then, this compass rose isn't always convenient um, depending on how your chart is folded, and that's why we use the protractor. Now, in this case, the compass rose is very convenient to the area that I'm navigating in, so I thought that I would go over, over how to use parallel rules for plotting courses. So we'll be using our parallel rules. And then our navigator's notebook with the information of the fixes, or sorry, the bearings that I took to major islet to in order to plot our running fix. So, as I mentioned in the basic plotting video, we always start with, with a known position or a fix. And in this case, as we're leaving the marina with you, within a boat length or two, I marked the time, which was 11.58. So I'm happy with that as a visual fix with dot and circle and the time of 11.58. So that's our fix leaving Lund at 11.58. And now my plan was to head off in sort of in this direction and then up this way. And so I'm just going to go straight uh, west on a, on a course of 270 degrees. Now remember this is 270 degrees true using the outer ring of the compass. We always plot in true and then convert to magnetic. So I'm going to plot my first, my course line first. And that's going to be 270 degrees like that. Straight out. And then that's my direction of travel, C for course, and S for speed. So now you can label this 270 um, in true, or the way I was taught is to label the steer, the course that I'm actually steering. And as I mentioned, I don't have a deviation card on this boat, so we will be steering a course of 253, 253 degrees magnetic. And how I got that, remember going from true to compass, we subtract easterly variation. The easterly variation was 21 degrees, 021 degrees east in 1992 with an eight minute westerly uh, change, annual change. So I've converted to 2022 and we have a variation of 017 east. And if you want to review the magnetic compass um, and how to convert these bearings, check out my video on the magnetic compass if you've not already seen it. And then our speed is going to be four knots. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is plot a dead reckoning position or a DR position. And as I mentioned in the, uh, in the video, I, was, uh, I, was, I decided to use a one and a half mile uh, distance for my DR. So one and a half uh, minutes of latitude. Remember, you always measure the latitude scale, the one running the, up and down the sides of the chart, not the longitude scale. So one and a half minutes of longitude, uh, sorry, one and a half minutes of latitude is one and a half nautical miles. So depending on what convention you use, some people just use a little line like that. Some people use a dot and semicircle. That's typically what I do. And then we label the time of 1220. So now, if we're leaving here at 11.58 and we're doing four knots uh, to go a mile and a half, we'll take 22 minutes. So using 60 DST, 60 D Street, to, con to figure out this, our time, um, 22 minutes to get to our DR. And at that point is when I'm going to shoot my first, or I shot my first LOP to major islet right there. So off we go. 22 minutes later, I shoot my first bearing to major islet at 1220, and it's a bearing with the hand bearing compass of 279 magnetic. Now going from compass to true, we add easterly variation, so I end up with a true bearing of 296. So I will plot my 296. So 295, 296. From major islet, and I draw a nice long line with an arrowhead at the end, and then I label that 1220. That's my LOP for 1220. I continue steering 253 at a speed of four knots, and while I'm doing that, I advance this LOP along my line of travel. 
Now, how I decide how far to advance it is you should have a minimum of 30 degree change between this line and this line, if that makes any sense. So I picked a half mile interval. I said a mile in the video, but I meant half a mile. And a half a mile at four knots is seven and a half minutes. So again, using the latitude scale on the side of the chart, I measure from my LOP, not the DR, from my line of position up the course line, and I'm going to advance that line of position half a mile or seven and a half minutes. And you see how these parallel rules can slip and slide. So just be nice and steady when you move them. So there's my advanced line of position. And we label an advanced line of position with 1220 to 1227. So that's how you know it's an advanced line of position because there are two time groups. At 1227, I shoot the bearing out to Major Islet, or shot the bearing out to Major Islet, and I got a bearing of 354 magnetic, or 011 true. And so I plot my 011 true from Major Islet, and this one's going to be labeled 1227. Now, as I mentioned in the video, where the second LOP, this one, crosses the advanced LOP, which is this one, is our R fix for 1227. And then from here, I didn't bother doing that in the, in the video, but I would then plot my next course going up along my journey. So now, this is a bit hard to read, so I've done an animation um, where it should be a bit more clear about what I've been doing here. As a review, we're going to look at the animation, and as well, at the end of the animation, I'm going to drop in the GPS fix and just see how accurate and how close I actually came with my R fix. Starting with my fix, at 11.58, at the Lund breakwater, I plot my course of 270 degrees true, and convert that into a magnetic bearing to determine a course to steer of 253 magnetic. As I said in the video, I was taught to label course to steer, and it is my preference, but many navigators label in true. Your choice. I plot my DR position for one and a half miles. It will take me 22 minutes at four knots to cover a mile and a half, so I label my DR with the time of 1220. At 1220, I shoot the first bearing to Major Islet. I convert to true and plot and label the LOP. I then advance that LOP by half a mile and plot and label it with 1220 and 1227 to indicate that it is an advanced line of position. I plot a DR for 1227. It will take me seven and a half minutes to go half a mile at four knots. At 1227, I shoot a second bearing and plot that LOP. Where the second LOP crosses the advanced LOP is our fix, and it is labeled with the time of 1227 and our fix. This red dot is our GPS position for the same time. So you can see that manual navigational techniques can be quite accurate. I always find this to be reassuring. Now, you will notice a discrepancy between our predicted DR position at 1227 and the boat's actual position as determined by our running fix and GPS. This is usually caused by current and can be corrected for. The difference between a fix and a DR position is called set and drift and will be the subject of a future video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode where I talk about my Airhead composting toilet installation. Thanks for watching. I wish you all fair winds and following seas.